This is the most orderly bear market I've traded. There's, there's phenomenal action on both sides. Um, if you are a, a trader, right? Not an investor. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the Access of Trader.com Weekend Update Show. Hope everybody is doing well. Hope everybody had a great uh, week of trading. Uh, we are obviously in the middle of a three-day weekend, or for me, it's Saturday morning. It's 7.30 in the morning, right? Uh, and again, this is the only time I have to uh, take care of everything because again, dad's life is never dull as all you guys were kids know. So let's talk about the market. So if you guys remember in 2008, right, when we went through this bear market, um, there was a, a really big effort by the government to, to inflow cash into the market, okay? And they started this cycle of what we call now, we reference to now is um, the Fed pumping up the markets, right? The Fed pumping up the markets with continuation of cash flow and the biggest problem a lot of investors have was when the market went on this big run well the market wouldn't have been on this on this run if it wasn't for the fed and i always maintain the fact i was like well i don't get this if if the fed didn't not the fed but if the treasury and everybody else in between federal reserve didn't bail out the banks in 2007, 2008, the market would have crashed. We don't even know where we'd be sitting here. We wouldn't even know if the whole financial system would still be even functioning uh, to where we were. So that area, that time was really necessary for the Fed to get involved. Again, everybody's complaining the market's going higher as the Fed was the backstop, but everybody was enjoying the profits because we kept on going linear literally from 2009 to 2020. 2020 came, right? The pandemic came. What happened? The Fed started pumping in more money and more money and more money. And the, the joke was, well, the Fed keeps on printing money. What's the difference? If it wasn't for the Fed printing money, well, the market would crash. Well, you finally got your wish, right? But I don't want to use the word crash. I think crash, I, I think because the age of social media, everything is sensationalized. A, a stock can't just go higher. It has to go to the moon. I don't know where the moon is, but it has to get there to, to be successful. The stock can't just go down. The stock has to crash, right? Let's let's kind of take a step back. So the people who were complaining about the stock market going higher because of the Fed, well, now you have the reality of what happens when the Fed takes the alternative, right? When the government takes the alternative of using a different format of kind of stabilizing things. So now they're not pumping money into the market, at least not as much. Now they're using something called the rate hike. And now, because of the rate hike, they're trying to contain or curb recession, inflation, and everything that goes with it that's making life harder for a lot of people. So the moral of the story is people were complaining when the Fed was pumping money and the market was going higher. Now people are complaining, well, now there's recession and the market's going lower. You can't have both ways, right? You, you really, really can't have both ways. And now we're kind of in a reality where the data in front of us is showing up pretty aggressive. And here's what the data is. We just finished up the first six months of 2022, okay? Uh, this is the worst six months since 1970. Just to put it into content uh, or into context, I wasn't born for another four years, okay? That's how long it was. I'm 48 years old. So this is 52 years ago. We had the worst half a year in the market. That's where we are right now, okay? And we're looking at now uh, all the things that people warned about that was going to happen, but yet, you know, they were complaining about when the market was going linear. So we got the recession, we got the inflation, we got, uh, you know, we got the surging expenses on, a, on an average family and everybody is in a weird way uh, putting in a lot less effort to kind of get out of this uh, but now we're seeing the ramifications of what everything we were complaining about, well, not me, uh, come into play. And here we are, 
right? And here we are here. You start looking at the market from, from the trading aspect and from the investor size, it, it's very rough, okay? Uh, and really, really rough. And again, if you've been watching the, the, this broadcast for, you know, just in the last six months, you, you kind of you know how big losing the 50-day moving average was. And yeah, you'll get your rallies in between. You, you even get some aggressive rallies in between. But ultimately what happens is because of the fear of, everything we just talked about. Plus now we have the fear of, well, corp corporate profits, right? Uh, we've seen now in the last six months, you've seen Amazon miss, you've seen all these retailers miss, Kohl's, Target, Walmart, Costco, right? It shows people are not spending money. So all the fears that uh, we had are playing out in real time. But for us from the trading aspect, and again, that's all we are. We're, we're, we're taking this uh, day by day, trade by trade. Nobody's trying to predict anything. Nobody's trying to be right. Again, I'm the biggest idiot on the planet. If I had to predict where things were, I'm going to be wrong 99% of the time. But again, when we talk about in every video, we're trying to use the data in front of us to, to, to formulate an opinion based on fact, unbiased fact, and try to trade that side of the market. And you know, we've been just going down for six months, some rallies in between going down going down further but but again re remember and this is the, the most basic thing in, in basic form of technical analysis nothing good happens underneath the 50-day moving average for investors right for traders it's a completely different thing again we're trading day to day one day i might love tesla one day i might hate tesla well, not hate i love tesla but at least trade it from both sides of the market and that's where we are we're just trying to take advantage of price action that there's an arbitrage in majority people not seeing it that way and hopefully it plays out that way because of confirmation not because uh, of our opinion and when you look at uh this week right really aggressive sell buying action great action really really great action uh tesla was really great this week uh the semiconductors just imploded this week we, we've been talking about uh the weakness in the semiconductor that's really the group uh because of the chip shortages because of everything that that's going on in the world because of the delays and this that and COVID still uh, playing playing a part from the corporate side of it, um, you know, corporate side of it is putting in still a lot of uh, a, a lot of uh, corporate restraints. We're, we're seeing a lot of weakness by the biggest group that is represented uh, in the Nasdaq 100. So even though uh, we had, you know, I hate to use the word rally, uh, but even though we had an up day, right? We had an up day on Friday. You can see what the semiconductors did, right? The semiconductors because Micron, uh, I guess, lowered some guidance, whatever the case may was on Thursday uh, really put a dent. So the question is going forward is what happens next. And again, it's it's a basic structure. I, I try to keep uh, everything basic. Remember the, the most infancy, infancy rule in trading, okay? For a stock ETF, a market to go higher, it has to take out the previous day. So if previous day's highs. So if you notice every single time we rallied, right? Rally in the last couple of weeks, what was the common denominator? This day took out this day, 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 this day took out this day. What happened? Finally, we, we, we gassed out, hit supply, and what happened? On the downside, this day took out the bottom, this day took out the bottom, and this day took out the bottom. We had an inside day on Friday. So if you look at the overall spectrum of where, where we are and you look at most charts, you, you can see these charts are bleeding. You can see this, again, you can rationalize uh, whatever you want. It's like, you know, it, it's like opinions, right? It's like Facebook had a, a pretty good pivot and, um, you know, and the stock goes down four or five bucks and somebody who's underwater from 300 when the stock snaps back goes, oh, you're an idiot. Uh, okay, are you mad at me or are you mad at yourself? I, I, I don't get it. So there's a lot of emotions going on. People are unfortunately trapped at higher levels. Investors, not traders, are trapped at higher levels. They're, they're trying to rationalize uh, and almost being in prayer mode that the market comes back. And my, my whole point was for the last you know, three, four, five, six months was, remember the, the market doesn't have to come back. If you started trading in the last, you know, three, four years, all you know is a bull market. Now we had uh, a market that's down six months in a row and you're saying, well, I can't believe the market hasn't snapped back. What's well, not to believe, right? You have the data in front of you, economic data in front of you that's, that's showing really, really bad readings. And well, by the way, I've traded two bear markets that lasted two, three years. So why do we have to come back? Right? Why do we have to come back now? Eventually, yeah, eventually uh, the market always does what it has to do. And eventually, if you look at the 100 year chart, you'll see that the market is, has sustained uh, its uh, lifetime uptrend. But you know, for, from the point of you being right or you being solvent, that's a whole different story. And that's 
kind of where we are uh, going into next week. And, and again, if you, if you look at the market, again, if, if this was a chart, right? This, these are the chart of the Qs. But if this was a, a, a chart of your favorite stock, would you be dying to buy this? Of course, your stock can go higher, right? So, excuse me, this, this, of course, your stock can move up. But the point is, can it go higher? And that's the and the big answer for that has been no, right? That's why we're still underneath the 50-day moving average. So if you are a long bias trader and you're saying to yourself, well, I, I can't believe, you know, I, I can't make you know, I, I can't make any 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 steam in this market. There's, what's not to believe? You're trading underneath supply. It's like there's a tidal wave and you're trying to get above it. Yes, yeah, sooner than later you'll get your head above water. But again, are you you might die in between. So this is a trader's market, and that's exactly what this is. Uh, but but I, I I will say this, and this has been kind of what I've been saying for the last six months. This is the most orderly bear market I've traded. There's there's phenomenal action on both sides. Um, if you are a, a trader, right, not an investor, again, we, we don't talk about investing. Investing is a completely different thing. If you're looking at this channel uh, from the investment point of view, you're going to get no value. Yes, I believe Amazon will be higher in five years. I believe, you know, Google will be higher in five years. We're talking about tomorrow, right? We're talking about the next day. We're talking about the following day. We, I don't know what's going to happen uh, the following week. Again, I'm not Miss Cleo. Nobody has a crystal ball. I'm the, I'm the, the most novice guesser on the planet. But again, you're not being paid to guess. You're, you're paid to uh, collect data. And that's all we can do here. So going into next week, right? You know, look, we had a, we had a, a up day on Friday. And my whole thing was, if you look at my comments uh, from Thursday night, the Thursday, Thursday, there's no video. It's usually my day. I kind of rest. And if you look at my comments from Thursday, again, we had a you know pretty, pretty nasty sell off this week. I go, look, I'm not really loving anything for tomorrow. That's for Friday. Uh, market might get a lazy grind up with traders take over. Everybody's gone, man. No institutional money flow is going to sit there uh, to to start beating stocks or really to you know really to start putting in he heavy money loose. Everybody's in the Hamptons. It's summertime. People are taking advantage of the long weekend. People are in Europe. People are you know taking time off, and that's exactly what it is. And that's exactly what happened on Friday. We kind of you know we we went lower. The semiconductor group was pretty much where the value was. We'll talk about the individual pivots in a second. Um, but the market grinded higher it, again. And here's the point: who cares, right? It doesn't make a difference. If a tr again, if a tree falls in the forest and nobody's around to see it fall, it doesn't make a sound. Nobody's around, right? So it didn't make a difference on Friday uh, yesterday. If the market went higher, the market went lower. There was nobody around to kind of defend or support prices. But the, you know, the market did play out uh, kind of how we thought. Lazy, uh, you know, grind up, uh, you know, for the week. Uh, down 4% for the NASDAQ. That can't be a good thing. And again, led by semiconductors. And if you look at the action on Friday, it's primarily semiconductors. Uh, MU, again, guided lower. There was a two-sided trade. And this is kind of for all you guys who are, who, who are watching. Again, I trade channels. I, I, again, I don't care, and I never cared, which way a stock goes, right? That's This is why you put 52, watch 52 to the downside of MU. If it builds below, can flush. In case they brush off news, they could go red to green for experienced traders. So we, we don't care which way the market goes. We don't fall in love with the company. We don't love with the pieces of paper. We fall in love with data. We fall in love with technical analysis. And again, I don't, I don't care what type of trader you are. If, if you don't have a, 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 at least a limited, you know, a limited background foundation of technical analysis, you, you're going to be spinning your wheels and eventually leave this business. Because again, is people can fight it all you want. Technical analysis is good. You can have the greatest company in the world, but if it's underneath supply, it's going to stay underneath supply until buyers start reclaiming it. So it's very, very important uh, to understand that. So let's talk about Friday's pivots. Uh, again, here's a two-sided play on uh, MU. If it went green, it never went green. Uh, MU 52 held twice. If it builds below, can flush. Again, not a big move. You're not going to get a big move. There's not really a lot of people to defend prices, but here's 52, right? Here's your 52 channel right over here. Defended it and just, they lost the 52. Went down to like 51 and change before a little rally before the end of the day. But again, is that, is that really great news uh, for semiconductors? Same thing with microchip, uh, 5624, if it builds below, can flush. Again, I wouldn't use the word flush, but it went lower, gave you a trade. Again, you know, all you do in this type of market on any type of market, you know, you take money along the way. Sometimes it'll be 50 cents. Sometimes it'll be $50. You don't know, right? You don't know the closing price. Your job is not to loan to understand where the closing price is. Your job is you went to win your interval. So here was the 56.24, uh, got, you know, went down about a dollar and then still closed, this is the lowest close in this whole formation on uh, microchip, uh, TTWO never got to 121. I, you know, from time to time, I put smaller cap names uh, on the channel. This one, uh, you know, this one, oh, actually went up a little bit. There's AYTU. 
Uh, here's AY2. I, get, I, I don't trade this crap, but you know, at least most of the time. So here it took out 75. Um, not a big move, went to 81 cents, nothing really there. Uh, Meta, nice push on Meta. They came, you know, they came pretty, pretty aggressive for the 155 weeklies. Uh, 158 if it builds below can flush. Uh, here was Meta, right? Here's Meta. So they took out the 158 and traded all the way down to 155. So all you guys who took the 55 puts, right, traded right to 55. Uh, I still like it that if, if the market resumes lower this week, and you know, probably does, maybe it doesn't, who the hell knows, right? I don't know. Uh, but again, 54, 54 is gonna be a big area going into uh, next week. And if Meta starts losing 54 and the market starts pulling down, you're gonna get a pretty big back test into the uh, rising support. Uh, so Meta here, here comes with 155, uh, 155 weeklies, and then I put it, you know, I put a couple of pivots, uh, a couple more pivots. Uh, this is, you know, I go just in case the market rallies. Uh, watch Amazon 108, 80, 109 needs to build for just cash flow. Again, Amazon pretty much closed at the highs. Not again, not a big move. There's nothing big about it. But here's the, uh, here's the again, East signal just still hasn't. Um, Still hasn't confirmed confirmed prices here. So here, yeah. So here is uh, so here's the 10880, right? So here's the 10880, 109, and pretty much closed at the highs. Went up, you know, went up about 80 cents or so uh, the day before. Amazon was an insane short. Um, and the last one here, sneaky pivot here, uh, 674 sneaky area. If it builds below, uh, can flush. You know, get eight points on Tesla as well. Again, not every trade needs to be 100 points. So here is the sneaky pivot. Uh, right here, here is a 674, right? This whole little sneaky support. And nice little channel, went down about eight, nine points uh, before it remounted. So look, the, the overall aspect of, of this tape is still sell bias. You will have days that are up days. You will have days uh, that you can take advantage to the upside. But until, again, guys, just remember this and put this in front of you on a sticky pad. Until we reclaim, right? And it doesn't make a difference what stock it is. Uh, what ETF, whatever, okay, until we reclaim the 50-day moving average, and you can see the importance, how long we've been underneath the 50-day moving average, that's the light blue line, until we, we stay below the 50-day moving average, the higher probability it will have lower prices. So that's it, right? That's it. We got some longs we're watching. Uh, we got some shorts we're watching. Let me give you guys a couple names. Uh, let me give you guys a couple of names that I am watching this week. Obviously, I watch Tesla every single day. Uh, both long and short, but you know, in case we rally, in case, right? In case we rally, uh, Microsoft looks okay. It looks okay, again, for a trade. Uh, you know, it looks okay for a trade. If it reclaims the five day and we do get a bounce on Tuesday, who knows, maybe get a little bit of a move. Uh, DXCM looks interesting as well. It's getting a little bit tight. Again, just for a trade, just literally for a trade, some cash flow, dollar, $2, 50 cents, whatever the hell it is, just to, just just some cash flow. Uh, I also like uh, on the short side, right? Uh, I like Lululemon. Lulu looks pretty good, right? If Lulu, the only reason it stopped here is the Bollinger Band, it loses the Bollinger Band, it can get lower. Uh, Google, you know, they came in two week expiration, 600 grand uh, for the 2000 puts. I'm gonna watch this channel here. Uh, if it starts losing, you know, it can get moved lower here. And Qualcomm, again, it's the, the, chip, the chip crunch, right? Qualcomm first day, uh, first close below the 10. If it loses this channel here, maybe it goes back to this 116 level. Who knows, right? Who knows? The, our job is to prepare, prepare for both sides. Uh, we understand the ramifications of a macro uh, universe we're in. And again, we're just trying to take it day by day. Guys, God bless everybody. Have a happy 4th of July. Go live your life. Smile, right? The easiest thing to do is smile. You don't need to complain. Whatever cards life gives you, just play them to the best of your ability. Sometimes you get a 2-5 offsuit but sometimes you will get aces. Guys, God bless. Enjoy the weekend, and God's help, I will see you all on Tuesday. Take care.